Okay, so here are your homework problems from last night that are on page, what is it, 308. Okay, so the first one is part two of the roller coaster. So the example we did yesterday dealt with the roller coaster going from A down to B. And in that example, 3,400 joules of energy were lost as it traveled that distance. And we know that because it told us in the example. So question 18 follows on it, and it wants to know, so what would be the speed at point C here if it loses another 400 joules of energy as it goes from B to C? Okay, so we're going to look for the speed at point C. So I've cheated, and I've already written down the long equation because I figured you didn't need to sit there and listen to me write down this equation. So you have to figure out where you want to call your initial. Now you can call your initial at point B if you want, or you can call it at point A. I'd probably go back to point A because I know the speed, and I know the height, I know they're exact, I know they're right because they were given. Okay, so if you do go back there, though, you have to remember then that the total energy lost is these two added together. Okay, so it's going to be 3,800 joules, not just the 400 that they gave us in problem 18. We have to add it to the 3,400 from yesterday. So at point A, it has a speed. It has a height. It does not have a spring, so this goes to zero. At point C, it has a speed, it has a height, it does not have a spring, but there's E lost. And we're looking for this speed. So take all your other terms over to the other side. 1 half mv initial squared plus mgh initial minus mgh final minus E lost. And that's going to equal 1 half e f squared. Then I would multiply everything by 2 and divide by m. So I'll have VF squared is equal to two brackets, one half MVI squared plus MGHI minus MGHF, oops, that's really an F, minus E lost, and then I need to divide by M. Okay, so if we fill our numbers in, we have two one half, our mass is 200 kilograms. Our speed at the top was 4 meters per second. And that gets squared. Plus 200 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Our height at the top is 15 meters. Minus 200 kilograms. 9.81 meters per second squared. Our height at point C is 8 meters. And then minus our totally lost, which is going to be 3,800 joules. Okay? And then that all gets divided by 200 kilograms. So I would reduce here, right? The zeros can go on all the 200s and on the 3,800. And then this 2 and this 2 in front will just cancel. And so it'll make life easier. So we'll have VF squared equals inside here, then we just have 1 half 4 meters per second squared. That should be, okay, oh, and I lost a 2. 1 half times 2, because I only canceled the 200. Um, plus 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 15 minus 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 8 and then the uh, the t two zeros go here so minus 38 okay and then on the bottom we've gotten rid of everything except the kilograms when you punch all this in your calculator 16 this becomes 294.3, this becomes 156.96, and then minus 38, and you'll get your V squared, uh, 115 point something, and so then VF will end up equaling 10.73 meters per second. Done. That's number 18. Number 19 is actually quite similar, different hill. 
uh, tells us that the speed at the top is 8 meters per second. It's a 70 kilogram mass, 12 meter high hill, and it wants you to find what's the speed at x if it's lost 1.23 times 10 to the third joules of uh, energy due to friction on the way down. So again at the top it has a speed, it has a height, no spring. At point x it has a speed, it has a height, no spring, it has e lost. And again we're looking for vf. So take the other two terms over. So one half mv initial squared, mgh initial minus mgh final minus e lost equals one half mv f squared. Multiply everything by two divide by m. So 2 times 1 half mvi squared plus mghi minus mghf minus e lost. And then that all gets divided by m. Okay, and then fill in your numbers. vf squared will equal mass was 70 kilograms. Speed at the top was 8 meters per second and that gets squared plus 70 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Height up there was 12 meters minus 70 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Height down here is 3 meters minus 1,220 joules and underneath dividing all of this is your 70 kilograms. Okay? Do the math, take the square root, and you should end up with 14.343 meters, oops, off the, off the screen, sorry about that, 14.343 meters per second. Okay? After you type it all in. All right. Number 20 is still pertaining to this diagram, but now it wants to know how much energy was lost between x and y. So you're looking for the E lost in this section. Okay, so again you write down your big equation. I would probably again go up here to the top because we've been given both of those just in case we screwed up that 14. So at the top it has speed, it has height, no x. At point y, sorry, no stretch. At point y, it has a speed, no height, no spring, but it does have E lost. This time we're looking for E lost. So E lost will be equal to 1 half mvi squared mghi minus 1 half mvf squared. So E lost will be equal to 1 half 70 kilograms 8 meters per second squared plus 70 kilograms 9.81 meters per second squared height was 12 up there minus 1 half 70 kilograms and in number 20 it tells us the speed down there at the bottom was 15.6 uh, so 15.6 meters per second squared. Okay, so E lost equals first term 2,240 joules minus, sec, oh, excuse me, plus 8,240.4 joules and then you're going to take away um, I think it's 8,000, no it must be 800. Yeah, it's 800. I'm wondering if I, where my decimals are. No, it is 8,000. Sorry, just couldn't make out my decimals. 8,517.6 joules. And when you do all that, you end up getting 1,962.8 joules lost, E lost. That's the total, though. That's all the E lost from up here all the way down to Y. The question only wanted the E loss between X and Y. So you have to go back to this answer and subtract your 1,220 joules that they gave you. And so then you get 742.8.